I'm going to talk about how to parent objects to a puppet that has been using the puppet tool. So I'm going to show how to oops use the puppet tool on this character's arm right here. And usually when you use the puppet tool, unless you do this step, it's really hard to make it appear like this character has something in their hand, for instance. So if you want to use the puppet tool on a character's arm, but you want to have like a separate object in their hand, um, that can be difficult to do unless you follow the step. Or if you have the puppet tool and you're using it on an entire character, and let's just say you want to put like a little top hat on their head or something like that, that doesn't bend and warp with the character, then you would need to use this technique right here. So this can be really useful. So I have, um, let me delete that. So right here, I have my character's arm and I could have drawn all these shape layers on one single layer right here. So I have the finger, thumb, at least the solo, and then I have the arm right there. And then I have a couple more fingers and they're all highlighted green right here. And let me just make sure that I have any animation deleted out of that. Okay, so if I were to use the puppet tool right now, this wouldn't work at all because I have all my shape layers on different layers right here. And I would need them all to be on one layer. And in addition to that, when you do, let's just say that hypothetically, I were to use the puppet tool in this arm right here. Let's demonstrate this. So when you're using the puppet tool, so don't follow this. this is, I'm kind of showing you the wrong way here. But um, start in the shoulder, draw it out like that. And so when I draw it, it's actually not messing up too much right here. Um, but I think it yeah, it actually is even still messing up here, where um, sometimes you'll see some weird artifacting. And um, you can actually, you can barely see it. It's up here. It, it causes some technical issues if you just use the puppet tool straight on a shape layer like this. And um, that is because a shape layer, its edge constraints go along the edge of the shape layer right there. And so if the arm extends beyond it, it causes these weird glitches to happen. Generally speaking, if you're using a character that where you've imported it on your, your own images, you um, should be okay on this step. But particularly with shape layers, or if you're trying to use a puppet tool and you're getting any weird artifacts, the first thing you want to do is select everything that you want to be puppeted right here. And so I just have my arm and all my fingers here. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to pre compose it. So if I right click and I go to pre compose right here, it's going to take all these layers that I've selected and then move them all into another composition. And I'll just call this arm. Oops, pre-comp. And you're going to, the default's good. So we want to move all the attributes into the new composition. So this option right there, and I'll press OK. And so right there, you see nothing, not too much really changed, right? It made a pre-comp right here of the arm. So all, it kind of combined everything into this one layer. And if I double click that, you can see all these individual layers are within that pre-comp right there. So I'll click back to my scene if I can find it. Let's see here. Oops. Apologies for the mess up there. So um, what it did there is it expanded the, the bounds of that layer right here to this outer edge. So it'll kind of keep that weird artifacting from happening. So now I'm ready to actually use the puppet tool. So I'm going to start in the shoulder and then move down to the hand. So I'm just going to use three joints. So I'll start at the shoulder create one for the elbow and then one for the edge of the hand here. And so now if I press V and then move this tool, it moves and I don't have any of that artifacting or aliasing happening right there. And so that's, you know, that's pretty great right there. So I can puppet it right here. And if I want to rotate the arm overall, I can just simply press this button right here or press Y, click on wherever you can find the anchor point right here and then just shift the anchor point to be over the shoulder. And so now I have the option, let me open transform, to rotate the arm this way. So I have that level of control right there. But I also, if I select the layer, and I could just press U, or you can go under Effects, Puppet, under Mesh, and then Deform right here, and open these my Puppet pins right here. 
and I can select the pen tools and I can, oops, I need to make sure I press V for the selection tool. And I can move the puppet pen tools this way. So the easier way to do that, again, is um, maybe just press U right here. And you see, instead of having to dive into all of those menus, just by pressing U, it brings me straight to these puppet pen tools. And so if you click away from the layer, you can see the pen tools disappear. And so, and now that I click back on the layer, we can't see them. So in order to see your pen tools again, you just have to click on one of these puppet pens right here and then just click on it and you can move it right here. So that's all well and good, but right now, if I were to take a shape layer, let's just quickly, I'm gonna construct like a hammer using a shape layer right here real quick. So I'll go layer, new shape layer, and I'm just gonna use the rectangular tool. It'll be pink with a black stroke right here. I'm just going to create a little hammer situation right here. And I'll reorder this so that it looks correct. All right, so I have my little hammer. And I will just press return and rename it right there. And the anchor point's all the way over here. So let me just real quick move the anchor point to the handle there. All right, so let's now it's on top of the arm. So I'm just going to drag it so that it goes under the arm. And then press R, which is the shortcut for rotate. Or you can click this open and go under rotation right here. And, you know, it's as if he's holding the hammer right here. But um, the parenting tool, as we know, it's not going to quite work here. So, for instance, if I parent this hammer to the arm like this, this is not going to work. Where I press the puppet pen tool, and you see, even though I parented it, the hammer is not moving with the hand right there. And so there's a step what we're going to need to do. So I'm just going to click on the parenting tool and go to none, just to kind of bring that back to its starting position. And what I'm going to do here is we're just going to need to do two more steps in order to parent the hammer to this hand. So. Right here, I'm just going to go layer, new, and then null object. It's really important that we create a null object for the hammer here. So layer, new, and then null object. And I'll just drag this so that it's right above the hammer. Press return and rename it. Hammer null. And you can see I rename all these layers because if you look at my character right here, if I didn't name this, this would be really difficult to keep track of right here. It starts to add up a whole lot. And so I created my null. And I'm just going to move the null so that it goes right on top of the puppet pen tool for the character's hand. And so right here, I have the puppet pen tool right here. So it's the, the pen is right there. My anchor point, if I click on the, sorry, my null, the anchor point of the null is right here. You can tell by the little anchor point icon. So I'm just going to move it. So it doesn't have to be exact, but just so that it's close to where that pen tool is right there. That'll be good enough. And so here's the step we're going to do to get this parent in. And one thing that's kind of an important aside before we get started with this is with the, the pen tools, it's really important that you have your pen tool kind of in a position right here where it'll kind of work as a nice anchor for your hammer. So if my pen tool only came up to here, let's say, and I didn't have this one right here, and I tried to do this parenting, there would be some weird stuff that might happen right here. So just kind of keep that in mind. So, you know, I want to parent this to his hand. And so I have a, a pen in the character's hand. That's basically what I'm saying there. All right, so let's get started with this. So um, under the hammer tool, I'm going to press P. So I'm going to select that layer and press P to bring up the position. You can also, again, you can just click this open and go find the position right there using this tab right here. and instead of parenting the entire layer to the pen tool, notice that this is the null that I'm doing right here. I'm going to um, parent the position of the null to the position of the, the puppet. So to do that, I need to click on the where it says position under the null. I'm going to hold Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, and then just click the stopwatch. And so you can see right here, it opens up some code right here. So if you're into writing code for like expressions for animation, this is this window is how you do that. But don't worry, we're not going to need to do any code here. 
And all I'm going to do is you see this little pick whip, these little icons showed up here when I pressed, when I held option and clicked on that stopwatch. And so this, this is called the expression pick whip. This is the expression pick whip for the position of the null. And I'm just going to click on this pick whip and then just drag it onto the position, sorry, the puppet pin three. And that's the name of the pen tool that's at the hand right there. So um, again, it's just this little spiral, going to click it and then just drag it to whichever puppet pen tool is that your character's hand, which for me is puppet pen tool three. So I'll just click right there. You see it generates that code automatically for us. And then make sure you don't type any other numbers or letters right here. And so just to make sure we close out that window, I'm just going to click my cursor right here in the empty part of the timeline. And so now the hammer is not going to move with it yet, but you can see right here, if you keep your eye on that null, that little red square, you can see that the null is moving with the hand there. And so now all we need to do is just parent the hammer to the null. So, and we'll just use the normal parenting tool for this. So none of this expression um, shenanigans here. I'm just going to go over to the main um, parent pick whip right here of the layer of the hammer. So it's going to be off to the right a little bit. And I'm just going to click it and then I'm going to just drag it onto where it says hammer null right here. So just onto so the pick whip right here, this off to the right for the hammer, drag it right to the name of the null right there. And so now the hammer overall is attached to the, the null. And so now when I move the character's hand, you can see that you know, the, the hand, sorry, the hammer moves with the hand there. And so I might, if I were to animate this right here, so let's just say the character's arm starts here and that's the initial keyframe right there. And I'll just mark this real quick. And let's just say around three seconds in, I want them to kind of raise their arm a little bit right here. So I just dragged my playhead to about three seconds. And then I'm using the puppet pens to move the character. And I can change their motion path right here. That's what this is right here. So by default, the elbow would just move in a straight line from there to there. But maybe I want it to kind of have a little bit of a curve to the motion right there. And so now I might need to add some animation to the hammer to make sure that it looks like it's still in their hand the whole way here. So under the hammer for the first keyframe, I'll click on rotation. I'll hold shift and drag to our second keyframe. And then just rotate the hammer so it looks like it's kind of in their hand the whole time. So now if I hold space bar, you know, that's a little bit of a rigid animation right there, but we have the hammer tracking with the puppet pins. And so final step to clean that up, if we're kind of taking this all the way here, is I'll drag and select those keyframes right there. And I'll hold shift and drag the keyframes of the hammer. So I have the keyframes of the pin, so the puppets of the arm, and then the keyframes of the hammer right there. And I have them all selected there. And I'll press the graph editor, select all the keyframes, or sorry, select all the initial keyframes right there. And I'll ease out of those. Then I'll select all the keyframes on the second part and I'll ease into that. And your graph editor might look like this. Or it might, so I'm using the speed graph mode, but it could also look like this if it's in the value graph mode. But those step or steps are the same either way. It'll just look a little different. And I'll move this back to the speed graph. I think the speed graph will be better for this. And if you want to have it ease in to that landing spot a little bit more, I just select all those keyframes right there on that the second part. I'll hold shift and drag this bezier to the left. And so now, it's going to ease in just a little bit to the motion, then it'll speed up right here, and then it'll kind of slow down as it lands to the ending spot right there. Right? So that is how you parent one object to another object that has pin tools attached.